Good morning and welcome to morning prayer this fine Thursday morning with much in our news about how things might change over the weekend or past the weekend, um, perhaps giving a sense of hope and um, thoughts of what we may be able to do that we haven't been able to do. So as we rejoice in that thought, let's come to our God this morning and worship him with our hearts and spirits. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ. Let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. <clears throat> to you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ once raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 118. I'll say the odd verses and Paul um, up there in Bailey will reply with the even verses. You can join in whichever you please. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim, his mercy endures forever. In my constraint, I called to the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is at my side. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my saviour, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations encompassed me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees, they blazed like fire among thorns, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected 
has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And our New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God... Command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me. It will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all the taters, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now 
and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Oh. So to our prayers of intercession, as we pray for the world and the church and the day ahead of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the church. During this Easter time, we continue to celebrate the empty tomb and the risen Jesus. Remembering the stone whom the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. We're reminded of our sin, the way in which the world, humanity, rejected Jesus Christ upon earth. But through his death and resurrection, he is now the cornerstone of our faith and our lives. So we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of following you, for the responsibility of being your disciples. Do pray that your Holy Spirit will equip us as a church to be faithful to the call you place upon us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for meetings of Christian communities yesterday. Thank you for the clergy teaching morning and for the meeting of prayer for Christians together in Redditch last night. Thank you that whilst our church buildings are closed, the church itself, our community, is very much alive and active. I pray that you would continue to protect us and equip us in the ministry and mission that we have in this ever-changing and challenging time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our own parish of Holy Trinity, district churches within that, our wider team ministry. Pray that you would continue to bind us together in unity and purpose. Today, within our diocesan cycle of prayer, we're asked to pray for ordinands in training. So we thank you for all those who are either considering a vocation towards ordained ministry or indeed ministry of any kind, and those who are currently undertaking training. And whilst we pray for those, we thank you for the many people within our midst who exercise ministry of all descriptions. All Christians have a ministry to undertake. We're all given a purpose by Jesus Christ within the church. So speak to us now, Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit. Affirm us in your calling upon our lives. Help us to discern, even in this new and unfamiliar time, what your call is for us. Lord, in your <coughs> mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, in that we pray too for um, people uh, that have gone through training for ordination and are now in that stage of awaiting ordination as deacons or, as in the case of Francis, our curate, awaiting their ordination as priests. Lord, we pray for them, particularly as ordinations have been uh, delayed to later in the year. Lord, we pray for them in their walk. We thank you for their faithful witness. And we pray that uh, you may be with them in uh, a time when the what was expected has been changed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, more widely, we are asked to pray for the Diocese of York today, with Archbishop John Sentamu, Bishops 
Paul Ferguson, John Thompson, Glyn Webster and Alison White. And even further afield, we pray for the Diocese of Mumias in Kenya with Bishop Joseph Wandera and the Diocese of Yola in Nigeria with Bishop Marcus Ibrahim. Thanking you for these peoples and asking that your guidance and blessing be upon them today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, as we've already alluded to, our government and prime minister, like many others at this time, are faced with important decisions this week. Decisions perhaps for which they feel unprepared, for which there aren't easy answers. So we ask simply that your hand be upon all those who make decisions on our behalf. That they may be the right ones with the interests of everyone at heart, but particularly the most vulnerable, those with most to lose, we pray that your Holy Spirit will watch over all of those with influence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at the same time, we pray for those known to us and our community who suffer, whether in body, mind or spirit. Remembering those who do suffer physically, either through coronavirus or other ailments. Remember those who suffer mentally, perhaps as a result of the lockdown restrictions. So we spend a moment now in stillness, bringing to mind those known to us. And ask that your Holy Spirit will bring comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, as we continue to celebrate the risen Jesus Christ and the good news that he brings eternal life and life in all its fullness in this life, in this world and the next. So we pray for those who are recently bereaved, friends and families of those who've recently died, remembering close to home, uh, the friends and families of John Sadler and Anne Wright, and asking that you would comfort and strengthen all these people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, as we prepare for a new day, we thank you for the opportunities that we will bring. No doubt the challenges too. We lift the plans and intentions that we have into your hands and ask that you will use us today as instruments of your love to build your kingdom in our lives and our world. So to our collect for today, almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Excellent. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, Privilege to pray with you this morning. Thank you. Uh, Pray your day goes well. And uh, similarly for those who are watching either this morning or at some other point during the day, pray that uh, you've known God with you and God with you in the remainder of your day. See you again soon. Take care.